it's an amazing thing. They, they give the absolutely paradoxical names to that which is supposed to reflect what the header is, but in its body it actually is totally different. Like you always have these terrorist organizations that, you know, call themselves the, the people's liberators. You have these like totally fascistic, corrupt regimes that always go by like the, the, the people's democracy or the democratic republic of whatever, when it's totally not democratic or republic. This was called the Online Harm, the Online Harms Act. And I'll, I'll bring it up. It's, I mean, it's, it's possibly the most uh, outrageous piece of garbage you've ever seen. Here we go. I'm gonna bring this up here. Get this out of here. Bill C-63. You know, I never realized that the C in the bills coming out of Canada stood for communism. I didn't realize that. This is Bill Communism 63. An act to, no, an act to enact the Online Harms Act. Keep saying the word act, man. An act to enact the Online Harm Act to amend the criminal code, the Canadian Human Rights Act, an act respecting the mandatory reporting of internet child pornography by persons who provide an internet service and to make consequential and related amendments to other acts. Uh, what's amazing about it is just th w everything else that they're amending. First of all, I, I, I mean, the question that I've been asking and I'll ask it through and through is what current laws do not exist that would necessitate additional laws to cover? It seems to me that there's already strong laws in Canada against child pornography, very strong, such that even the essence of this act, which I don't think many people would disagree with, protect, you know, make the internet safe for kids. Won't someone please think of the children? Uh, this has nothing to do with children. This has to do with, won't someone please think of the adults so that we can shut them up forever? Her, uh, and I, I've highlighted some, you know, the, 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 Great parts, and all, the great parts. I've highlighted the, what I think are the important sections. The Online Harm Act, whose purpose is to, among other things, listen to this, promote online safety of persons in Canada. Uh, nobody can disagree with that. Reduce harms caused to persons in Canada as a result of harmful content online. And ensure that the operators of social media services in respect of which the act, that act applies, are transparent and accountable with respect to their duties nah, under the act. This is where... You realize, like, yeah, we all, we want to see the algorithms. We want to know how YouTube is suppressing. And then you realize why the government can't do it. I mean, this is, there's, a, there's an objective that we all could get behind. How are, they, how are they controlling algorithms? How are they suppressing information? How are they censoring users? Uh, then the government goes ahead and gets involved and says, uh, yeah, we should also define hatred while we're at it and amend the criminal code to make advocating for or promoting genocide uh, a, a, a punishment that can be punished by life in prison. So you got the you got four parts of it. Part one, part two, punishment that can be punished by life in prison. So you got the you got four parts of it. Part one, part two, amends the criminal code. So we're down here. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. And we're going to get to this in a bit. Part two amends the criminal code to, among other things, a create a hate crime offense of committing an offense under the act. So violate the act, it's a hate crime offense or any other act that is motivated by hatred based on certain factors. It becomes a crime if it's motivated by hatred. I, I have difficulty imagining thinking of a crime that's not really underlying, underlied by some form of hatred. Um, I think there are a great many like murder, ha hatred, hatred of the person or the hatred of the fact that they have money and you don't or the hatred of the fact that they have nicer shoes. It's very difficult to think of like assault not being motivated by hatred, but being motivated by love. It's, it's a tough thing to think about. Create a recognizance to keep the peace relating to the hate propaganda and hate crime. So that, to me, I mean, I, I know that they set up a commission, but we'll get to it. It's, it's the new ministry of truth. Define hatred for the purposes of the new offense and the hate propaganda offenses. I mean, this is... This is not out of Orwell's 1984. This is out of Bill C-63 in 2024 out of Canada. Define hatred for the purposes of the new offense and increase maximum sentences for hate propaganda offenses. Then you got a, a part three, amend the Human Rights Act. And part four, Orwell wasn't predicting the future. He was summarizing the past, a past that he had lived through and a past that does its cycles throughout the history of humankind because humans today are not much different than they were 5,000 years ago. They might have different technologies to implement their desires for full control, but they have the same basic human desires for good and for bad. Part three, oh, it's not in order, but part three. Ah, uh, yes, the Ministry of Truth has come to Canada, but they call it the Digital Safety Office of Canada 
to be ranted about imminently. The Digital Safety Office of Canada. The Digital Safety Office of Canada is established. I mean, it, it is the Ministry of Truth. You just don't call it the Ministry of Truth. It's like, oh, that would be ridiculous. We can't call it the Ministry of Truth. That People would laugh at us. We can't call it the Ministry of Government Propaganda because nobody would accept it. So like, you know, with Lisa's massive tax grab or the uh, temporary refund adjustment, they call this the Digital Safety Office of Canada. They've created another bureaucracy that can go ahead and carry out government wishes and government, uh, I won't say oppression, but government censorship. The office's mandate is to support the commission and the ombudsman in the fulfillment, fulfillment of their mandates, the exercise of their powers and the performance of their duties and functions. They create an office, they create an ombudsman, they create, they just appoint, appoint government workers who've been so good at doing everything. I mean, we're, we're, li we're living through a, a period right now where the government literally went from spending $80,000 on the Arrive Can app, that was the budget, do you know, does everybody know this, by the way? I, I didn't talk about this because like too many things were happening. The Canadian government initially budgeted, budgeted $80,000 to develop the Arrive Can app, that piece of shit app that told me that I had to quarantine my 12 year old healthy daughter because she was unvaccinated. It wasn't actually the app that, that said it. It was the filthy bureaucrat of the government who called me up on my cell phone and said, we have on record that you entered Canada on a given date and that you entered with an unvaccinated traveler and that she has to quarantine. And I didn't say, go fuck yourself. But my goodness, was I thinking it? I didn't say it because I wanted to record the conversation as I did. It's on my uh, YouTube channel. There was a purpose for this. I'm talking about, you know, what could go wrong when the government gets its hands involved in things? An ombudsman, an office, bureaucrats. The government um, budgeted $80,000 for that Arrive Can app out of Canada. Does everybody know what it cost? Ultimately. I mean, some of you who do know, don't spoil it. Let me go to the chat. Does everybody know what it cost? Just take a wild guess. They budgeted $80,000. What was the final cost of the Arrive Can app that didn't even work? 60 million Canadian dollars. I mean, it's, it's so preposterously egregious. It's so insanely idiotic. It's so wildly emblematic of government corruption, government incompetence, government tyranny, government abuse. And there's still dipshits out in Canada saying, no, 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 Let's, this is a good law. What could possibly go wrong? We should trust Trudeau with this. $80,000 budgeted, 60 million spent. I, and I couldn't believe the number that I was hearing. I just, they kept saying, I was like, it, I, must be, I must be hearing something wrong. It's, it's, it doesn't make six million, maybe 16 million, 60 million. And I hope I didn't get it wrong. Plus, by the way, oh, now they're going to investigate. And Justin Trudeau, that scumbag POS that he has, he comes out and says, there will be consequences. You are, are, need to suffer the consequences of your incompetent, corrupt tyranny. You need, you're the one, but do the, the buck doesn't start with you and you kick it down the street. It ends with you. Oh my God, no, there'll, there'll be consequences. Oh, and they're going to throw two civil servants under the bus. So yeah, that government is now in charge of establishing, what was it called? The Digital Safety Office of Canada. Holy shit. So they've established the, the Ministry of Truth. Okay. Yes, yes. Hey, we must, we must define hatred. Listen to, listen to this. This is the proposal. And they had tried this before. And I, I, think it, it, I think the bill died the last time they tried to define hatred under the criminal code. So this is part of the act. And this is part of the act that proposes the amendments to the criminal code. And it provides, paragraph four, subsection 3197 of the act is amended by adding the following in alphabetical order to the criminal code. Hatred means, listen to this. Well, how, how do you define if an act was performed with hatred? Under this act, under the criminal code. Hatred means the emotion that involves detestation or vilification and that is stronger than disdain or dislike. I, I, I'm going to read that three times in a row, not five. There's an old expression, you know, say it five times in a row to really understand how utterly insane something is. Hatred means the emotion that involves detestation or vilification, and that is stronger than disdain or dislike. La haine. Hatred means the emotion. It involves detestation and vilification, but it goes a step beyond just a mere disdain or dislike. So you can still commit an act with disdain or dislike, and that wouldn't be hatred. That wouldn't be a hate crime under the law. But if we come to the determination that it was actually, it wasn't disdain, it was detestation, and it wasn't dislike, it was vilification, 
You're going to jail for a long time, buddy. Clarification. <laughs> for greater certainty, the communication of a statement does not incite or promote hatred for the purposes of this section, solely because it discredits, humiliates, hurts, or offends. Hatred means the emotion that involves detestation or vilification and that is stronger. That is more bad than disdain or dislike. There was some idiot in our government, and not just one idiot, a group of idiots, a gaggle of idiots, sitting around a table saying, how do we define hatred so that it's going to be criminally enforceable? That's the best they could do. A bunch of idiots trying to staple an egg to a wall. They didn't realize you had to freeze the egg first. That's a riddle. I just solved it. I just solved a riddle right there. So that's that, trying to define hatred. It's, it's a fundamentally subjective term that means different things to different people. I, uh, first of all, also, I hate Justin Trudeau. I know that I should not have hatred for other humans, but I, I, I genuinely hate Justin Trudeau. Okay, well, he's not a protected group. Oh, I, hold on, I had, a funny, I had a funny tweet. It's a funny tweet that idiots, people who lack senses of humor, or people who uh, don't want to understand will, will, will pretend not to understand it. And I, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's a Babylon Bee uh, article, you know, it's a Babylon Bee headline today, and then it's the law tomorrow. Boom, Justin Trudeau criminalizes hate speech against protected groups, because that's all, it's not, it's not hatred against an individual, it's protected groups, Jews, gays, trans, blacks, Muslims, whatever, it's protected groups, all right. Justin Trudeau criminalizes hate speech against protected groups. Justin Trudeau comes out as gay or trans. Justin Trudeau can no longer be criticized without it constituting, quote, hate speech. Hate speech. Checkmate bitches. And yes, I was using bitches in the non-gender based term because it was required for proper delivery. And that is a, that is a Babylon B tweet today and it's reality tomorrow. Uh, th there are a bunch of trans politicians. There are a bunch of gay politicians. There are a bunch of Jewish politicians. If I criticize them, if I express disdain and vilification for them as politicians, I said you did it because they were Jewish or black or Muslim or gay or trans or whatever. This is the amending of the criminal code, people. Advocating genocide. Every person who advocates or promotes genocide. Advocates genocide. What, what, does that, what does that mean? Promotes genocide. Every person who advocates or promotes genocide is guilty of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment now, some people are oversimplifying it and saying if it's just a mere hate crime or you commit a crime that is deemed to be motivated by hatred, you get sentenced to life. No, there's other aggravating factors for that, but it's not. Right. No, this is, this is specifically, hey, I'll steel man it. I'll steel man Turtle's uh, bullshit law. This is only for genocide. So if you advocate or promote genocide, that's the only one. Don't worry, people. They're not going to, they're not going to use it. I got three questions. What does advocate mean? What does promote mean? And what does genocide mean? And I'm not trying to be glib, and I'm not trying to be uh, uh, too cute for school or whatever the hell it is. What is meant by genocide? Are we going to go to the, uh, the UN definition there, the very broad one that, that you know, uh, displacing, changing language as, as qualifying, ge constituting genocide? If you say everybody in a specific region should not be speaking, hey, everyone in Quebec should be speaking French. Is that, is that genocide? Are you advocating genocide against Anglo-Quebecers? Myself? Jail for life? Everyone in Quebec should be speaking French. I've heard a lot of uh, separatists say that under, under the very broad definition of genocide, which could involve suppressing linguistic rights. That's genocide. Oh, here, let, uh, some other ones, which are uh, hot topics. From the river to the sea. Anyone who advocates or promotes genocide is subject to life in prison. How are they going to define genocide? From the river to the sea, there are people who believe that that is a call for genocide. Life in prison? There are people who say that if you say Israel has the right to exist, that's genocidal. Zionism is genocidal. So if you say you're a Zionist, some people are going to say that's genocide. By saying you're a Zionist, you are promoting, what was it? Promoting or uh, advocating for genocide. It's okay to be white. If we get to the point where people say, well, Russia is committing genocide in Ukraine. If you make an argument for the fact that Russia might have some historical, linguistic, cultural claim to the Donbass region in Ukraine, are you promoting genocide? It, it, it's so effing insane. It's so effing insane. And it's insane because it is not required to solve whatever problem they purport to exist now. It's, it's, it's simply not required for it. And I'm going to say, do it, do it. Go to, go to the court and have the court adjudicate on whether or not that provision of law defining hatred is not void for vagueness. Well, is it, what was it? Is it detestation or vilification or is it just a strong dislike and disdain? Eh. Void for vagueness if this ever goes anywhere, but there should be rage. There should be political, judicial, legal rage. Rage, rage against the dying of the light because that is what is happening coming out of Canada under the tyrant Trudeau.